Well, Goffey, I've got to say, I don't know whether you agree or not, mate. We'd be the very p- people that w- would be sitting here this morning ripping right into Arteta and indeed Arsenal if, you know, the result hadn't gone their way or if West, mm. you know, they hadn't. So, you, I know they're playing a weekend West Brom side. I get that. I totally get that. But you can only beat what's in front of you. And, and they've done that. And they've done it handsomely. You were at the game, Sam. <clears throat> you know, they, they didn't get it all their own way for the first 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, but, come on, guys. I'm my young's got a heart attack. Like I said, got a goal. Saka was out of this world. You know, you've got, there's, there's, there has to be positives. I said it in the commentary last night. I think, you know, it's one of those shot in the arms and you hope that now Arsenal can use that as a platform on which they can build something from. Aubameyang getting three goals last night makes him feel good. Saka and Erdegaard seem to link up really well. It's a perfect game for Erdegaard coming in to make his second debut. He's got the freedom of the Hawthorns. He's got so much room to play. And when he is able to do that, he's, he, he looks fantastic. Can he do that against Manchester City? Is he going to play him instead of Smith-Rowe? I'm not sure, but, you know, obviously it was an important win for Mikel Arteta. Well, yeah, I, th- I think what said yesterday is, but um, it, it was massive for Arteta this because if he would have played a real weekend team and got beat, all right, everybody would then expect him to get beat at the weekend. Can you imagine what would have followed? I think I said yesterday on drive, I know I said on, on drive, but he has to go play the best team he has available. Yeah. People like Aubameyang need some minutes under his belt. Ali will tell you. He's a goal scorer. A goal scorer only gets better and more confident when he puts the ball in the back of the net. Now, look at the confidence he takes from that game now, having scored, you know what I mean, scored goals. Yeah. It's massive. And they got thrown a bit of a, a lifeline because West Brom, West Brom made 11 changes to their team and mm. it shows where they're going to concentrate this season. The manager, who's a fantastic manager, really like him, obviously I know him from Barnsley. And... He does play that high-intensity football. It's exciting. But the young <laughs> players couldn't end-to-end. handle that. They did it for 30 minutes. Non-stop and pressing, out. exactly. Um, and it's great when it works. And his first 11 have got it off to a T. What is it? One draw, three wins. But against Arsenal, you just you can't do that, especially with the changes he made with six well, it, debutants. But it, they needed the win, didn't they? It was desperate for the win, yeah. There's a, there's a question for you guys then, right? We, we, we have been um, critical... And understandably so, of <laughs> managers not playing top level teams in this mm. tournament. Stevie Bruce was, you know, we're asking the question about Stevie Bruce, for example. Did your man at West Brom get it right? No, because, I don't think he did. I thought that was actually. Because, he, I was in, actually, I was in the, in the little boys' room after the game, and a few of the fans were saying he's put himself under pressure for the weekend. Well, now. look at Bournemouth as well. I, 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 I can't do with this. I mean, Bournemouth did it when they were in the Premier League. Now they're doing it and they're in the Championship. I mean, they yeah. made, what is it, nine changes or eight changes to their uh, team and got battered, didn't they? I don't, uh, get it with, I don't get it with the EFL Cup. It's one of those, it's the easiest tournament to win in terms of number of fixtures you have to play in order to get to Wembley. I don't get why clubs that haven't won anything for a very long time don't prioritise this. Like Jose Mourinho used well, to well, do. Well, it would have been in The flip like side of the coin, we're talking about Ismael, for example. If I'm the West Brom supporter, I'm thinking to myself, well, we're a great start of the season. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, we've we, we battered Sheffield United. And we're probably getting Arsenal at the perfect time. Mm. So why not feel your strongest side? Well, he had a few problems with COVID last night, so he couldn't put Callum Robinson in the team. David Button also had COVID. But that wasn't the reason that he changed 11 players. He didn't fancy risking any of his players yeah, going yeah. forward for the championship campaign, which we know is arduous anyway. And what, and what managers do now, you've seen them do it when you've, you've seen the interviews and there have been these documentaries on football clubs. They pick the team a week before. This is right. This is the team I'm going to play Saturday. This is a good, it's almost like going on the Lions tour at rugby, isn't it? Where they have a midweek team, yeah, and a weekend team. Yeah. That was certainly the case for Man City towards the end of last season, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's yeah. what they do. Yeah. Uh, one thing I learned about Arsenal last night says uh, Jason in Christchurch they could probably win the championship next season. <laughs> a bit, a bit unnecessary oh, that oh, Jason well that's for sure there are 11 changes in that West Brom side <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what did you make of the Arsenal fans after the game charting uh, AFTV get out of our club um, I mean obviously it's very difficult to sort of pinpoint exactly where that was coming from but it was certainly when they were locked in after the match they had to yeah. stay in for a couple of minutes you could hear them singing and chanting that I mean is that uh, people you, saying have had enough of the negativity surrounding the club do you know what it is it, it, it's and it's getting 
it's very common now. Effectively, it's football fans not ha- happy with the way the club's been your club has been run and owned. You know, this is nothing. But new. A- AFTV is Arsenal fan TV. I know it is, and I know it is. And we, the lad's name escapes me. We had him on on Monday Robbie. morning. We had Robbie on on Monday, and I've got to say, he spoke, he spoke very well. Now, once you once you start criticising, that's effectively fans disagreeing with each other, right? And AFTV, I've got to say, the one thing they do, they voice their own opinion. Mm. And, and Sam, I'm all for it. <clears throat> because some of the some of the TV, um, the own clubs, TV stations, if you like, it's like <laughs> you know, it's like Russian TV. They just go in and say exactly what you, what you you want to hear and want want to listen to. At least they're a little bit different, and they're voicing opinions that not everybody, uh, particularly Arsenal fans, agree with. So listen, that's football. We all we've all got different opinions, and we don't agree with you know a lot of things that are said. I, I'm I'm all for it. It's just effectively a freedom of speech, that sometimes doesn't toe the party line. Mm. I, I absolutely I agree, and I think it's become really popular though because of Arsenal's demise, hasn't it? That's the reason it's become so popular because it's been, it's really took off because Arsenal have been in a negative passage for such a long time, and that's why it's been a popular show. But a lot of fans now are, are sick of it because, as Ali says, what they want to, all they want to hear is fluff around the edges and get uh, all the positive stuff. But there isn't much positivity to talk about Arsenal at this moment in time. I want there to be. I really do. I want Arsenal to be competing for the Premier League. I've always wanted an open Premier League. You know what I mean? Where you can have someone you get into it, like a Leicester, like a West Ham, and Arsenal get back in there. I want that to happen. I really do. But I'll tell you the one thing you could never question, and it's Robbie Lyle's um, love and feelings for Arsenal Football Club. Mm. That's the one thing, Sam. That was, that's the one thing that's very evident when he speaks. Well, I heard him with you guys on breakfast earlier in the week, and he was, you know, he was talking about loads of different things. He was talking about um, the idea of supporting Arteta and being behind Arteta and the reasons why he didn't think it had worked and why, at the beginning, that's how he felt about the whole project and he was behind it. But actually, ultimately, you know, it is a results-based game, yeah. and there should have been parameters that were put in. In place for him to, to 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 have to achieve. He had to achieve, you know, whatever basic European qualification had to be a, a stipulation if he was going to continue in the job. They didn't do that, and I don't think there was the framework around him. So that you've got, he's a very young manager. This is his first yeah. job in football. I mean, you know what it's like, Ali. Your first real yeah. job as a manager, yeah. taking over a massive, <clears throat> massive club. It's and not it, easy. You need the framework around you, don't you? Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. And in many ways, the, the first thing he does is, is set everybody's standards perhaps a little bit unrealistic when he goes and wins a cup. You know, he goes and wins a cup, beats yeah. two top sides in doing that, and everybody automatically thinks, "Oh, well, well there you are. That's what we're going to. That's the standards that we're going to continue with." Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil, Thursday and Friday morning, six till ten on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.